Now that we've seen how the native application work, uh, let's switch gears and um, uh, let's see what it would look like if we are missing an application on the platform because it was not recompiled yet. Or what if the sources are owned by a customer, for example. We've heard from many of our customers that they plan to recompile all of their relevant applications to Project J, but it takes some time. And meanwhile, we've developed a system that would simplify the transition period between when the platform become available and when recompiled binaries become universally ready. So let me demonstrate how that would work. Um, let's say we just included unzip. but we don't have zip for whatever reason, right? And we can uh, unpack the archives, but we cannot uh, pack a new one. So let's see what we can do. So what we created is right here, we have um, dedicated portion of a root file system to x86 world, which contains the most frequency, frequently used tools and libraries. And um, indeed, it looks like yet another root file system within root file system. But in here, we also don't have zip. Let's try to install it because we configured an easy way to download missing packages from Debian online repo. Let me show what it looks like. Uh, let me download zip right now. Okay, while it's uh, downloading, uh, let's uh, point out uh, that zip was dependent on unzip both of which are downloaded and installed right now it's simple process and it what it looks like uh, when what we expect when we use native package management on linux let's give it some time Okay, and now that it's here, let's hope that we got it in our x86 world. It is indeed here. And it is elf binary for x86. Well, that's, but doesn't matter, let's try to run it. It's working. It's packing us some files. Um, notice I just typed executable name and it started to work. System recognized the non native format in the ELF file header and started the appropriate binary emulator. So if you need to wrap it in the script, it's not an issue. Uh, let me pull uh, process monitor. You don't see it here right away. Oh, here it is. So it found and uh, ran appropriate emulator. Let me stop that. We, we see it's all working. Um, 
But we don't have to stop with x86. Nothing prevents us from executing binaries from other platforms with the same amount of ease. Let's look at, um, for example, ARM. And let's run something simple. Let's first check its ARM. It is ARM, and we'll just run it. And it's working as well. And one more thing, not only ARM, not only x86, um, but I can give you risk five. What do we have for risk five? For risk five, we have BC binary calculator. And we'll do one plus two. And it's indeed three. Okay, um, so with this in place, uh, you can see that Prodigy is truly a universal processor. Not only you could throw any type of workload on it, such as traditional data center, HPC, or AI, but you can have it execute any binaries in your collection. An interesting thing to note here is that with the amount of computing power Prodigy will be packing, some non-native applications will be working faster than on their original platforms, even despite some emulation overhead. Have you uh, seen a high-performance RISC-V design yet? Or ARM faster than x86? Me neither. But it might be possible with Prodigy.